Good evening to those online. Hallelujah. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. For those who are ready to worship God, can we stand in this place? Wherever you are, prepare your heart now to give God your best praise, to give God what is due unto Him. I want to read Isaiah 45, 2 to 6. It says, this is what the Lord says. I will go before you, Cyrus, and level the mountains. I will smash down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. And I will give you treasures hidden in darkness, secret riches. I will do this so you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. And why have I called you for this work? Why did I call your name when you did not even know me? When you did not even know me, it was for the sake of Jacob, my servant, Israel, my chosen one. I am the Lord. There is no other God. I have equipped you for battle. Though you don't even know me, so all the world from the east and the west will know that there is no other God. I am the Lord and there is no other God. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. He is the God who will work in the midst of those who don't even know him to proclaim that he is God to the ends of the world. This is the God that we serve, that he will use anything to glorify himself. And for those who know the Lord, let us worship him from a heart that is grateful. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the King of glory. Hallelujah. We bless the King that we understand that he's powerful. We understand that he's worthy. We understand that he's God before time. And after this time, he remains as God. We bless him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we lift your voice in the house? Hallelujah. Yeah, God, you're worthy. We bless you, sovereign God.
want us to worship him. I want us to exalt that powerful name. I want us to magnify his holy name. I want us to bless his majestic name. I want us to glorify the name of Jesus. The most high God, the most powerful name. The most glorious name. The most excellent name. I want us to bless his name. I want us to glorify him. I want us to exalt his holy name. I want us to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the eternal rock of ages, the ancient of days, the bright and morning star, the Holy One of Israel, the Yahweh of Judah, the Elohim of Israel, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Most High God. Hallelujah, we bless your name. Lord, we worship and adore you. Lord, we glorify you, King of all creation. We give you all the praise, the one that dwelleth in Shekinah glory, the one that is covered by light as with a garment, the one that rules, O oh God, in the midst of the cherubims. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Be thou exalted, O oh God. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we worship. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we give you all the glory. Because you are worthy to receive all our praise. We thank you for bringing us together again. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our individual lives. Even today, alone. If we can number all that you have done, there are two innumerable that can be numbered. Lord, so we appreciate your goodness. We appreciate your loving kindness. We appreciate your tender mercy. We thank you for your compassion that fails not. We thank you because it is of your mercies that we are not consumed. You kept us by your mighty hand. If you should, if you should mark iniquity, none of us can stand. The Lord, we thank you because there's forgiveness with you that men may be feared. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord, for sparing our lives to see another day. We return all the glory unto you, Father. Lord, take all the glory and accept our worship in the name of Jesus. Lord, we sanctify ourselves before you. We present ourselves unto you, O God, this evening. We ask, Lord, that you yourself, you will meet with us today as we present ourselves before you. Lord, cleanse us and wash us from every unrighteousness that only your name will be glorified in our midst tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Washington. You are all welcome to church. I want to welcome everyone that is watching us from home. I want to welcome you to our prayer meeting. And I believe that you are ready to pray. Amen. Amen. The time of prayer meeting is for prayer. Amen. And it is important that we know that we need to pray. You know, some people don't believe too much in prayers. They don't believe you should be praying much. Wake up in the morning, just pray five minutes, and, and that's enough. You know, some people believe you only pray when you have a need. You only pray when the devil is attacking you. Or you only pray when you are in debt and you want God to help you pay the debt. So they pray so fervently during that time. When the problem is solved, oh, thank you, Jesus. Next time I come to meet with you when I have another problem. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But prayer is much more than just coming to ask God. Prayer is actually
fellowshipping with God. Prayer is communing with God. Prayer is being in the same room with the Almighty God and staying in His presence as long as you can. Hallelujah. It's very important that we know that the time of prayer is a time of fellowship. The time of prayer is a time that we worship Him. It's a time of praise. It's a time of lifting up his holy, our holy hands before the Almighty God. Hallelujah. I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of 138. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah, I know you'll be surprised. Which book? <laughs> which, which book of the Bible reach up to 138? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that we all know that that's one book that reach up to 138 uh, and beyond. Praise God. Psalm 100. And 38, we're going to read from verse, from verse 1 to 8. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read from the screen here. I will praise you with my whole heart. How many of you want to praise him with your whole heart? Amen. Amen. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple. And praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Which means he has many names. Above all your name. Amen. Amen. Is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord ever present. Is Jehovah Shalom. The God who is our peace. He has so many names. It's Jehovah El Shaddai. The God that is more than enough. But he has magnified his word above all his name. So whatever his word says tonight, what God is saying is that you can reckon on it. You can believe it. You can trust his word. Because the word is magnified above all his name. He has so several names that this finds him. The name that describes his personality. Hallelujah. He said, in the day when I cried out, you answered me. And made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Verse 5 says, yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the holy, is the glory of the Lord. He said, though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. Hallelujah. But the proud he knows from far. Verse 7. He said, though I walk in the midst of trouble. Look at this God now. You will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. Verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. Another transition said, do not abandon the works of your hand. Hallelujah. And that scripture is, I know we have been talking about it. You know, because uh, we are in July... And July, meaning seven, is the month of perfection. Praise the Lord. But this word has been there before July. Amen. When July is gone, this word will still be there. And God has magnified his word above all his names. His word never changes. His word is forever settled in heaven. Whether it is July or January or December, the word of God is ever settled in heaven. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So verse 7 says, he said, though I walk in the midst of trouble, he said, you will revive me. Amen. Amen. He said, you will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. 
And he now said, I know that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Amen? He will perfect that which concerns me. Say, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. And say, do not forsake. Do not abandon the works of your hand. Amen? Amen. You know, there are some projects. They are living projects. There are some projects. They are abandoned projects. Is that all right? A lot of people start it. They started it. But it gets to the maybe halfway. And they abandon it. Why? Because they don't have the capacity to continue. Amen? Some people start, you know, they started a project. And maybe three quarters to the end, money finished, everything finished, everything used up, all the materials used up, and they abandoned the project. They forsake it. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. But the scripture tells us tonight that he will not abandon us. Amen. We are projects in his hand. Hallelujah. And he will not leave us until he has finished that project. Anybody believe that? Praise ye the Lord. God is good. And so, that's why I believe so strongly in that verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. What does that supposed to mean? Will there means it is futuristic. Amen? He will means that it's not done with you yet. Amen? He will means that there are still a lot of things he wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. He will means that you are not a finished product yet. Amen. You are not yet a finished product. Something is still going to happen in your life. It doesn't matter what the devil does. You are not finished. It's not finished with you yet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Men may write you off. Situation may write you off. But God is saying, don't worry. I will perfect all that concerns you. Praise the Lord. Amen. What does it supposed to mean? What does it mean? The law will perfect. And let me just give some definition. Perfect means to accomplish. It means to accomplish. It means to finalize. Amen. In NIV, it, 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 said it, it means to fulfill. The law will fulfill its purpose for you. The Lord. the Lord will accomplish everything that he started in your life. That's what it means. The Lord will finalize everything that you cannot finalize by yourself. Praise be the Lord. Amen. It means to complete. To complete. Or to bring to completion. It means to perform. Hallelujah. Alright. To perform. To perform. Uh, uh, you can find that in, first, in Philippians 1.6. Uh, it also means to finish. To finish. Amen. That's NLT. Uh, describe it as to finish. You will finish. That work is started in you. It will not be abandoned. Praise the Lord. It will not be written off. It will not be neglected. It will finish. There are some of you, you have a project in your hand. And you are already giving up. That project will finish. Because the God you serve is a finisher. Amen. Amen. It doesn't abandon projects. Praise God. You know, people abandon projects. There are reasons why people abandon projects. Am I right? Maybe the, the money finished. Maybe even the loan they took. Everything finished. On the, and the, the project is just halfway. And so they abandon it. If you look in some places, you see abandoned buildings. Abandoned projects. Lord, you will not be an abandoned project in his hand. Whatever you lay your hand upon shall complete this year. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever your expectation is, it shall come to pass. Why? Because it's the Lord who will do it, complete it. Who will perform it for you. Amen. It's very important that we understand. You know, this is a word of faith. Amen. Faith in challenging times. It doesn't matter what happens. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. I don't care what the enemy does. I know the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. He will finish what he started in my life. He will complete what he started in my life. 
He will establish what he, he, he started in my life. That is God. You know, that psalmist. He understood God so much, he started with praise. He said, I will praise him. Every time I'm going to praise him. Even the kings of the earth. He was king himself. He said, the kings of the earth will praise him. Why? Because by the time he perfects what he has promised, you will have no reason. You will have no choice. But to do what? But to praise him. Hallelujah. Praise in the Lord. So, it's very important we understand the scripture. He will perfect, he will perform, he will finish. Everything that is unfinished in your life, in your business, whatever it is, God will finish it up. In the name of Jesus. So, we are here to, you know, to allow God to breathe into us and to, and to rejuvenate our faith again and to cause something from the inside of us to rise within us and say, look here, I am no hopeless. I am not a hopeless person. I know God that I serve. He will do what he promised he will do. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, it is very important, know this, when God said he will perfect that which concerns you, number one thing he was saying is that you are not yet a finished product. So don't let anybody conclude about your life. You are not yet a finished product. God is still working on you. God is still working in your business. God is still working in things that about your life. Don't let no one, you know, in, you know, Timothy, um, Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, let no one despise your youth. Let no one think it's done, it's finished. They look at you last year, you, are, you almost look like the same. This year, yeah, three years back, you had just the same. And they said, this one can't move beyond where he is. But that is not true. You serve a God that is in the business of finishing what he started. God has never abandoned any project. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you are not going to be an abandoned project. It will finish what he started in your life in the name of Jesus. It means it is something God wants to do. No, no. It means that God is still working on you. It means that your life can still be better. Amen? Because if somebody has not finished, how many of you have seen a building that has been built and it's not yet completed and you don't know how it's going to look at the end? And by the time they finish that building, you see the edifice. You say, what? This is what we were building the other day and it's shapeless. Some of our lives look shapeless at this time. But when God finish, <laughs> the work is doing in your life, you will be like an edifice. You will be so beautiful. You will be like the similitude of a palace. Hallelujah. Look here. Something may, everything may be going wrong at this time. It is because it, God is in the process of putting together all the materials to make you the perfect man. Hallelujah. That in your business, it will be perfect. In your ministry, it will be perfect. In your finances, it will be perfect. Because God is putting raw materials together to make sure that project is fully finished. It's fully finalized. And it will not stop. But yes, you know that God cannot run out of materials. <laughs> you know God cannot run out of finances. Because cattle in 10,000 of hills belongs to him. He has silver and gold. The Bible says all, every good gift and perfect come from above. And coming down from the father of light. In whom is no variableness in that shadow of turning. The Bible says the Lord is a son and a shield. He said he will give grace and glory. He said no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That is the kind of God. He cannot run out of material. He cannot run out of resources. He's going to complete what he finished in your life. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter what the enemy does. He will finish it in the name of Jesus. And so look back in January. And see what God has promised you for this year. And you are in July. And it's like nothing is happening. God is still working. Hallelujah. He's putting everything together. And by the end of the year. You will look back and say. Oh praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that's God. He will perfect. And that is the kind of God that David served. He said I know he will perfect it. I'm not afraid. I'm not hopeless. 
you know, that's why he spoke to himself, you know, in Psalm 42. He said, you know, he said, uh, um, why art thou cast down? Oh, my soul. Why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. God is a perfecter. God is a finisher. God is an accomplisher. God is a performer. Hope in God. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed. Don't feel frustrated. Don't be hopeless. Because the God you serve will never abandon you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is not true with you yet. It means that your best is yet to come. That's what that means. It's a future effect. It's a will. It means that your, your best is yet to come. There is still some good things in stock that God wants to release into your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe God. You know, David, I love him. You know, I love him. He's so strong in faith. Every time you see him talking about God, it's, you know, you know this one really know God. Praise God. You know, in Psalm 26, sorry, Psalm 27, you know, there was a time he was talking too. You know, he started from was what? He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, this, is the strength of my life. Or who shall I be afraid? And he continued and he continued and in the last verse verse 13, he said, oh, I will have fainted. I will have been so discouraged. I will have fallen off unless I have believed that this God who never fails, I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord. In this land of the living. <laughs> because I know my God is a perfecter. I know my God is a finisher. I will have fainted but I realized something. I realized that God is a perfecter. God is a finisher of what is started. And whatever it is that you have written off in your life. I want to let you know God is working. And is going to perform everything. That is started in your life in the name of Jesus. It's not true with you yet. You may be passing through fire now. But you know what? When God is true with you, you will come out like gold. Is that not what Job said? I may be passing through fire. When I come out, I will come out like gold. Amen. That is what God wants to see in our lives. You will come out as gold. Because God is not true with you. You know, your situation may be like passing through fire. Your situation may be like, you know, Totally, totally hopeless. The God, when He is true with you, He will turn you to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's very clear there that God cannot abandon you. God cannot forsake you. Amen. He will never forsake you. He will never do what? He will never fail you nor forsake you. That's what the scripture says. He says, so that we may confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what, what man can do unto me. Praise the Lord. So because he's going to finish what he started in my life, he's going to finish what he started in your life, it is therefore a call for prayer. Amen? It's a call for prayer. Every divine act of God is an answer to prayer. God says, Sammy said, the Lord will perfect it. I know. But I'm not going to say it and just sit down there. Amen? Because every divine act of God is stimulated by prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's stimulated by prayer. And God wants us to pray. Amen. He wants us to pray. Every time there is an answer to prayer, it is that somebody, I mean, it brings about a divine action. Or every time there is a divine action, it is a response to some prayers. Praise the Lord. You know, many years ago, I'm not supposed to be preaching today, isn't it? I'm supposed to pray. You know, many years ago, there's a lady shared somewhere before. There's a lady who, well, it's a colleague and she wanted to work where I was working at that time. So it's like, you know, she really wanted it bad, bad. 
And she was praying. And so she was praying. And he said, one of the days, she, she saw maybe a vision. And God told him, I mean, God told her that it is done. You know what? He said, let me just say this. That's the way he, she told me by herself. He said, because Pastor Adelie has prayed for you. <laughs> that's, that's what she told me. He said, it is done. Because Pastor Adelie has prayed for you. And when she told me, I cannot remember when I prayed for her. That, that's the truth. I couldn't remember when I prayed for her specifically to say, oh God, remember this sister. I couldn't remember. But it was later the Holy Spirit told me, didn't you pray in the Holy Ghost? Do you know what you prayed about? Didn't I tell you? <laughs> I will help your family and we pray according to the mind of God. What do you think you are praying about? I mean, that was, that was something you know, that really broke my soul. I didn't know <laughs> that I prayed for her when I was praying. And that is why I'm saying, you know, it's not, when you come to pray, it's not because you have so much need. That's why you can pray two hours. That's why you can pray three hours. No, it's a time of fellowship. Sometimes you are not asking for anything. You are asking for other people. Praise the Lord. As you pray in the Holy Ghost. And God begins to work wonders in different areas. That is why when you see something happen, Somebody has prayed. You see a very terrible, you know, very terrible man gave his life to Christ. How, how did it happen? Somebody has prayed. Amen? Amen? That is the truth. Somebody has prayed somewhere that you never knew. Praise God. And that is why every time I speak about the Holy Spirit, I talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit. I talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I don't care whether anybody believes it or not, but I know the scripture says that when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, they spoke with new tongues. And let me tell you, there are many people I will have prayed for when I'm praying in tongues. Many times I don't pray for myself. Many times I pray in tongues. Sometimes pray in tongues for three hours. Doing what? Using it for what? I don't even know what I pray about. It is me and God. I don't, I never knew what I was praying about. But God is saying, when you are doing that, you are praying for that person. You are praying for that person that you didn't know about. And something was just happening for them. Praise it, the Lord. And so it is very important. Amen. Don't think it is rubbish when people are saying it. Don't think you didn't understand it. Let me tell you, God, God understands. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Very important. You may not know this, but that is very important. I want us to pray, okay? And so, when you want to deliver, when you wanted to deliver, okay, no, that's a scripture I want us to read to buttress on what I was saying. That's Jeremiah chapter 29. Then we will pray. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse, I will read from verse 10. 10 to 14. Jeremiah, I was actually saying that every divine act of God is an answer to prayer. Praise the Lord. Somebody has prayed somewhere. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 10. He said, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, amen, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Did you hear I will there again? I will. Amen. Verse 11. I want you to watch I will, I will, that God said in, this, in the passage that I'm going to read. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Amen? Twelve. Then you will call upon me. Did you hear what he said in verse 11? <laughs> Did you hear what he said in verse 11? He said, I know the thought that I, I, I think towards you. He said, thought of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. In verse, in verse 12, he now said, then you will call upon me and go to pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13. I want you to watch the I will of God there, okay? And I will, sorry, you will seek me and find me. When you search for me 
with all your heart, you will find me. Hallelujah. We serve a God is not lost. You can find him. Amen. <laughs> His throne is in heaven. He sits in heaven. He makes the earth his host to. So you can find him when you seek him. We haven't finished, you know. We haven't finished that, that passage. He said, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Verse 14. And look, look at how many, how many I will there of God. He said, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all nations and from all the places I've driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried, to be carried away captive. See how many I will. That is God is committed to his word. I will. I will. I will. Hallelujah. God will in your life. God is going to do it. Praise ye the Lord. He will perfect it. Praise the Lord. I said every act of God is an answer to prayer. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm not talking much about that today, but I want to remind you that when he wanted to deliver Peter from the dungeon, what did he do? He stirred up the church to pray. And when they prayed, he was delivered. James didn't get the opportunity. The church thought, oh, Herod was, must be joking. He killed him before they realized. Praise the Lord. But when he, he took Peter again, he said, no way. This one cannot happen. He rose up and they started to pray. Praise ye the Lord. When Paul and Silas were in prison, what happened? God steered them up in the middle of the night. The Bible says at midnight. Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises. And all of a sudden, there was an earthquake. God came down to visit that prison. And every prison door opened. All the chains, not only of, their, of them, of Paul and Silas, but of all the others in the prison, every chain was loosed. Everybody was set free. Praise the Lord. That is what happens when we pray and sing praises. God acts. God operates. God moves. And it's not only moving in your life. It's moving in the life of all the people around you. It's not only Paul and Silas chain that were loosed. It was not the only door where they were in that was open. It was every chain of everybody in the prison were loosed. Amen? And all the doors where they have locked them in, every door opened. And that is what happens when God set us up to pray. May God continue to set us up to pray. May God set you up in your closet to pray. Set you up for some miraculous. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Uh, this, this evening with that verse. That's our key verse. The Lord will perfect all that concerns me. What do you want the Lord to perfect in your life? What do you want the Lord to perform in your life? I believe you have a lot of things to tell him. Look here. This one, I want you to perfect it. This one, I want you to complete it. This one, I want you to finish it for me. This one, I want you to, you know, to accomplish it for me. Lord, it is not by might. It is not by power. It is by my spirit, says the Lord. So it is not him of him that will it, nor of me that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. It is God that causes us to will and to do of his good pleasure. He will perform it irrespective of your contribution. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Because even if you are not praying, somebody else is praying for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise it the Lord. So I want us to rise and turn all the things I'm going to be calling to prayers. We are going to turn into prayers. God is not true with us yet. God is not finished with us yet. We are going to pray, God, I want you to perfect it. I want you to complete it. I want you to finish it. This thing that I started, uh -uh, I want you to finish it. You started it, but you can finish it. Praise it the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you read that scripture, it kept on saying, I will. <laughs> I will. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will bring you back to where you're supposed to be. 
I will gather you from the nations. Uh -uh. I will bring you to the place. I will. I will. And every time, you know, God says that God is willing to do it. God will perfect it. I want you to believe God tonight. Whatever is impossible that you think is written off, that you yourself, you have written it out there, oh, this one, <laughs> let me just forget about it. I want you to bring it up. I want you to resurrect it. I want you to revive it. And say, God, I'm handling this in your hand. Because you are a perfecter. Because you are a performer. Because you are a completer. Because you are an accomplisher. Because you are a finisher. Hallelujah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. So I want you to pray, Father. <laughs> the Bible says, you will perfect all that concerns me. Therefore, I pray today. I want to teach some of you how to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, come and perfect all that concerns me today. All about my spiritual life. All about my job. All about my business. All about my career. All about my marital life. All about my family. All about my children. All about my finances. All about my ministry. Father, come and perfect it. Father, come and bring it to pass. Everything you have said concerning these different areas of my life, I want you to tell him specifically what do you want him to perfect in your life? What do you want him to perfect in your life? There are certain things that need to be perfected in your life to make your life complete. Am I right? There is something that needs to be perfected in your life to make your life what it's supposed to be. And that's what God wants to do in our lives today. Tell him that area. Is it marital? Is it your job? Is it your business? Is it your career? I want you to tell him to perfect it. After all, he has promised, I will. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Perfect which concerns your marital life. Perfect which concerns your business. Perfect which concerns all that concerns your spiritual life. Everything that concerns your ministry, everything that concerns that business, everything that concerns even your house, maybe housing project, everything that concerns all that you do, the Lord will perfect all, all, all in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, say, Father, come and complete all abandoned projects in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit. So, Father, everything that I cannot finish by myself, finish it for me this year in the name of Jesus. Everything I cannot finish by myself, everything that I don't have the power and the ability, the capability to finish, Father, finish it for me. In the name of Jesus, because it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by your spirit. Oh Lord, let it be done by the by your own name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Because of our time, I'm just reading the prayer so you pray it and believe it. In the name of Jesus, the next prayer point say, Father, please put the finishing touch. To all the deficiencies and the unfinished works in my life. In the name of Jesus, I want you to say to God, every finish, put the finishing touch, all the deficiencies, all the unfinished work in every area of my life. I want you to put the finishing touch. I want you to perfect it. I want you to complete it. I want you to do it. To the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, You are praying, you know, say it after me. The Bible says that your plans for me are for peace and not for evil. Today, come and fulfill your purpose in my life. And complete all your plans for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me repeat it and you say it again. The Bible says. Your plans for me. 
are for peace, not for evil. Today, Father, come and fulfill your purpose in my life and complete all your plans for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you said it, that your plan for me, they are peace, they are not evil. Lord, you want to bring me to an expected end. Father, come and fulfill your purpose in my life. Father, come and complete all your plans in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, remove the cause in my life and turn into blessing in the name of Jesus. Father, remove all stumbling blocks in my way and turn into stepping stones in the name of Jesus. Father, turn all obstacles to miracles for me in the name of Jesus. Father, turn my sorrow to joy and my weeping to laughter in the name of Jesus. Father, take away my ashes and turn into beauty in the name of Jesus. Father, turn my money into dancing in the name of Jesus. Father, turn away all my zeros to superabundant surplus and my lack and wants to divine prosperity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you will turn my desolation to fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you will turn my dryness to a pool of water in the name of Jesus. Father, that you will perfect all that concerns me this month of July in the name of Jesus. Father, please by your mercy, complete and bring to final conclusion the good work you started in my life from January in the name of Jesus. I want you to say that very resoundingly. Father, please by your mercy, complete and bring to final conclusion the good work you started in my life from January in the name of Jesus let none of them be abandoned Lord that you will complete it you will bring it to final conclusion by the end of this year I will sing praises to you by the end of this year I will give you all the glory in the name of Jesus thank you righteous Father blessed be your holy name in Jesus name we pray the Bible says you continue. The Bible says, <laughs> I'm just teaching you a little to pray today. The Bible says in Psalm 89, verse 34, that you will not break your covenant, nor utter the word that has gone out of your lips. So, Father, please remember all your promises that you made concerning me this year. To bring them to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember all your promises according to your word that you made concerning me at the beginning of this year. The Lord, you will remember to bring them to pass in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. Because I'm taking you by your word, your word never fails. You will never utter anything that has come out of your mouth. Everything you said concerning me this year at the beginning, I'm still waiting for the perfection, for the performance, for the completion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That's the first round of my prayer. Can we have a seat for five minutes? Praise the Lord. You see, sometimes we still need to learn to pray, you know. You know, quote the scriptures. 
tell God what he said. You said this. Uh -uh. Come and do the way you said. Whatever you said, you have to do it. Praise the Lord. And the next thing I want us to pray, we have how many months to the end of the year? We, we have still about six. Somebody say five. But we don't complete July yet. <laughs> All right. We have five and a half. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some people already believe that this month, I've seen the end of it already. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit told me something, you know. As a matter of fact, let me tell you that some churches at the middle, in July like this, they have to spend some time to fast and to pray for God to take them through the remaining half of the year. And, you know, what the Holy Spirit told me is that, look here, nothing just happens. And if you are going to expect some new things to happen for the rest of the year, you need a new anointing for the next level. Amen? You need to get some fresh anointing. You need to get some fresh oil in your life to take you through victoriously, triumphantly, successfully in the name of Jesus. And so, I want us to pray. That's the next prayer we are praying for fresh anointing. We are praying for the anointing for the next level. Anointing for the next half of the year and beyond. That will take us through it victoriously. Triumphantly. Amen. Whenever God will accomplish or whatever God will accomplish in your life. He will do it with the power of the anointing. Praise the Lord. Because yesterday's anointing is not enough for today. Okay? Praise the Lord. So it is not enough for the new things God wants you wants want to do in your life. You need fresh one. Amen? And that is why I'm bringing this. We are going to pray. Therefore, you need a fresh and a new anointing for your next level. Hallelujah. Many, many years ago, I understand that there's a role of the anointing in the lives of children of God. Amen? In fact, nothing happens. Nothing happens to us without the anointing. The anointing is the power of God. The anointing is the grace that, of the Holy Ghost that He released upon our lives. Nothing can happen without the anointing. That's the truth. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's not by praying from morning till night. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. And if you have that anointing in your life, yoke shall be destroyed. Burdens shall be removed. Okay? Strong goals shall come down. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Many times we pray and pray and pray and nothing happens. Why? No anointing. That's the truth. There are some, there are some, I mean, we read from the scripture, Jesus said there are something that won't go like that. There is a special anointing that you need to break such, 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 some powers. Amen? Hallelujah. That's some anointing that's going to take you to the next level. Hallelujah. Anointing that the devil cannot defeat. Anointing that the enemy cannot at any time defeat. That's the kind that we are talking about. And so God wants to release fresh anointing upon you for your next level. For the next six months, and beyond. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what I, 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 I'm trying to bring across to you right now. Praise ye the Lord. And the anointing I'm talking about is not the one that you have been using from January. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new. Every morning. Every day. Let me tell you that. Maybe you need to, you need to uh, copy that. Every day I ask God, Lord, anoint me afresh. <laughs> Every single day. But yesterday one is expired. I want a fresh one. Praise the Lord. So I ask that every day before I leave. If I don't pray anything, I say, Father, anoint me afresh. Fill me afresh with your Holy Ghost. Empower me afresh. Because there are a lot of things that are happening all around us that have used up. We have used up the anointing. Give me a fresh one. Hallelujah. Let's read Psalm 92. You see the psalmist 
requesting God, desiring God, look here, I need fresh one. I don't want the old one. Some of us are so complacent, we are satisfied with the old things. No man. God said he's going to do a new thing. You don't need the old thing again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible says you have to, all the old things, you have to pack them somewhere to be able to contain the new. Now, verse, verse 10. Verse 10. Amen. He said, but my horn, you have exalted like a wild ox. My horn. The horn represents the strength of the ox. It's the strength. He can do anything with the horn. Amen? Amen. He can carry an animal and throw it away with the horn. He can get, you know, hook on a, a tree, big tree, and tear it down with the horn. The horn is the strength of the horse. The horn is the strength of the unicorn. The King James call it a unicorn. Praise the Lord. He said, I have been anointed with fresh oil. Well, King James doesn't put it this way. He puts it in a prayer form. He said, thou shalt be anointed with a fresh oil. Thou shalt. He said, my horn, you have exalted like the wild ox. Why? Why the horn was exalted? Because he was anointed with fresh oil. He got new strength. He got new energy to do anything. Because the Lord anointed him with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. In the Bible, anointing represents oil. Some people talk about oil. Okay? Some people talk about anointing. Some parts talk about unction. Praise the Lord. Amen? So it's very important we understand. And um, So anointing is very important in the life of every child of God. And, uh, uh, and we need to first of all understand it, desire it, and pray for it all the time. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. One of the things the devil hates and targets in your life is the anointing. He never wants you to have the anointing. He will target it. He wants to destroy it. He wants to remove it. He wants to see every way. You know, he will bring some things in your life that, you know, before you know you forget about the anointing. The devil targets the anointing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know what? The Lord will anoint you afresh. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I know that mask is really doing bad and good. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 11 of the same scripture, verse 11 says, My eye also shall see my desires on my enemies, and my ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. That is David for you. He depended on the anointing to finish all his enemies. He depended on the anointing to vanquish every power of the enemy against this life. He depended on the anointing. That's why he prays for it every day. Say, my horn, my horn, my strength, you will exalt like the horn of a unicorn, like the horn of a white horse. My strength will come afresh when you have anointed me with fresh oil and I can, I can finish all my enemies. I can kick them away. I can frustrate all their efforts because of your anointing upon my life. When the anointing comes upon you tonight, your life will be a frustration to the enemy. Because everything they tried will not work. In the name of Jesus. Because whatever they try won't work. That's why that scripture says, it says no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. Why? It is because of the anointing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want us to pray. I don't have much time. Today is a special day. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I want you to, I want us to read one more scripture, then we pray. Or you can read it later because of the time. But Psalm 89, you can read verse 19 to 24. Isaiah 10, 27, it talks about the anointing. In Isaiah chapter 27, it talks about the anointing as the burden remover. Yoke destroyer. The anointing is a life changing power of God. The anointing is a divine enabling. Amen. It is an overflow of the Holy Spirit through a human vessel. Anointing is used severally. As I've told you in the Bible, it talks about ointment, 
talked about oil, he talked about unction, and he talked about anointing as well. Praise the Lord. So the release of the anointing signifies the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Very important. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 11 to 13. You can write it down and read it again. I'm telling you, when you read the Bible, especially in the book of the kings, there is no king that was enthroned to be king in Israel without being anointed. None. It started from Saul. There was no king in Israel. Before they became king, they have to be anointed. Why? Because they need the anointing to function. They need the anointing in that, in that, in that position. So every one of you need, we are the king of the kingdom, isn't it? We are the priest, the royal priesthood. We need the anointing. There is no priest. There is no priest that is assigned to carry out service for God that is not anointed in the Bible. Amen? So we cannot do with the anointing. Praise the Lord. Without the anointing, we can't. We need a fresh one tonight before we go in the name of Jesus. Anointing clothes you with a divine power. Amen? The Bible talks about how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. And he was healing everybody that, 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 that was oppressed by the devil. Praise the Lord. Anointing set apart for divine assignment. Amen. And the last one there, anointing makes you a touch not. Hallelujah. Whatever the enemy does comes to nothing in your life when, your, when the anointing of the Lord is upon your life. In Psalm 105, verses 13 to 15, the Bible says, it said they, they move from nation to nation. Okay? From one land to the other. It says, uh, he suffered no man. He permitted, he permitted no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sakes. Huh? The next verse, verse 15, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. He reproved kings for their sake. Amen. He have permitted nobody to do them harm. Why? Because of the anointing. Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. And no harm. When you carry the anointing, let them try. Let them try. <laughs> they will always pay praise to the Lord. Except you don't have the anointing on you. Hallelujah. That's why in Isaiah 54, it's in verse, verse what now? Verse 15. No. Verse, yes, 15. He says, he said, they shall surely gather. But not by me. He said, when they gather against you, they will do what? They will fall for your sake. Why do you think they will fall for your sake? It's the anointing. Hallelujah. It is the anointing that makes a difference. If you don't want the enemy to, to follow you, you want them to fall for your sake. Hallelujah. He said, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. It is not just by mere saying, you need the anointing. Praise it the Lord. So before we go this evening, we are going to pray. Lord, release your anointing afresh upon me. This journey is too far. I cannot walk it alone. I need the strength of your anointing. I need the power of your anointing. Oh Lord, anoint me afresh. Release your anointing afresh upon me like you release it upon Jesus. Jesus himself could not do anything without the anointing. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? He couldn't do no good if there was no anointing. I want us to pray, Lord, I need a fresh anointing. For the next five and a half months and beyond, of this year. I want you to anoint me afresh. Anoint me with power and with the Holy Ghost. As you did Jesus. I receive a fresh anointing. I receive a fresh oil. You know, David said, I've been anointed with fresh oil. And because I've been anointed with fresh oil, no king, no enemy can stand, will be able to stand before me. Hallelujah. I want you to ask it, pray. Father, release upon me today. Fresh anointing. Pour upon me a fresh oil. A fresh unction. 
for my next level in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray after me again because of time. That's why I'm doing this. I want to pray for me, uh, with, uh, after me. Pray, Father, Father, release upon me today a fresh anointing. Pour upon me a fresh oil, a fresh unction for my next level. In the name of Jesus, Father, by your anointing upon my life, Cause me to ride upon my high places and be lifted to higher grounds in the name of Jesus. Father, let your anointing work wonders, miracles, and signs in my life for the remaining part of this year in the name of Jesus. Father, by your anointing in my life make all impossibilities possible in the name of Jesus Father your word says I just quoted that scripture that they shall surely gather but not by your approval Father by your anointing let all those who gather against me fall for my sake in the name of Jesus, Father, by your anointing, let every activity of witchcraft against my life and against your church be paralyzed and destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in verse 15, you said no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Father, by your anointing, cause every weapon formed against me come to nothing. And every tongue that rises up against me be condemned and cut into pieces in the name of Jesus. Father, according to Psalm 5, and verse 12. <laughs> According to Psalm 5 and verse 12. Because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. By your anointing. Release your blessing. Into my life. And surround me. With uncommon favor. For the rest of the year. And beyond. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your word says in Psalm 102 and verse 13 that you will arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her has come. Therefore, by your anointing, pour your unequal favor upon my life this month and beyond in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer again because the Lord will arise and have mercy on Zion because the time to favor her has come. I pray, oh God, that by your anointing you will pour upon my life on equal favor this month and beyond in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. Why not put your hands together for Jesus? If you believe that God is connecting you with the next level favor, come on, jam those two hands together for Jesus. And if you have your envelope with you, just raise it up. I'm going to pray on those envelopes. 
those envelopes, I'm going to pray on them. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we raise up our offering unto you in this envelope. We pray that your blessing rest mightily upon it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your servant you have used. Father, he has pronounced blessing, anointing, lifting, favor upon us and upon your church. We pray, O oh God, that he will be partaker of this order of anointing in his life and ministry in the name of Jesus. Father, we use this to connect to our next level. Father, we pray that you will bless this offering and let your blessing rest upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, with the next song, let us give unto the Lord.